All right, guys, welcome back to more Path of Exile. So in this part, what we're going to focus in on are the Eldritch Currency bosses. These are going to be uh, things that you will encounter as you progress in the game and uh, what you can do to actually obtain these. Uh, the first time that you uh, do these, you will have to do them as they will be in green. After they uh, are finished in green, they will then drop as white items. The white items you can actually trade. They're the exact same item, it's just that they want you to complete the atlas. Um, technically, I'm showing you guys this like at this point where technically like or we've already done the uh, Maven boss fight. But the thing is, is that for whatever reason this time, they decided to make the drop chance super, super, super low uh, for the Ashes of the Stars amulet as well as Crystallized Omniscience. Those are two of the best amulets, I would say arguably in the entire game. Uh, they are way, way, way more expensive. Like instead of it being like 30, 40 chaos, uh, they are now in the... <laughs> 50-ish exalt range and uh, when I did my build guide I did mention that like this is what we're gonna get because it was really cheap before but they changed the entire drop uh, Rate and that increases the price I'm still using the exact same amulet um, that you guys have been seeing for a long time in the gameplay So don't worry that you have to have this before you uh, you know finish off the character You can still do a lot of DPS do maven do the feared no problem without it But uh, the reason why I'm uploading this now is I was thinking that the prices were gonna go down and it would make a lot more sense but uh, at the moment, yeah, they're still very, very expensive. But we're going to do these two like mini bosses and then we'll do the harder bosses. And what these will unlock is the uh, stones. The stones will then increase the map tier of your maps. And eventually you're going to get all four of them. But technically you can do these before the Maven if you want to. Again, like I mentioned before, with like the end game guide, some interactions will just happen naturally a little bit faster than others. And it depends on kind of your luck in PUE because there's a little bit of RNG sometimes with the maps. Now, in order to get these, you just select whatever invitation that you want. If you want the red one, you select the red one. If you want the blue one, you select the blue one. And how it works is on the 14th, uh, once you defeat a boss of tier 14 or higher with the, whatever one enabled, it's going to then drop um, one of these, depending on the color, and you're going to correspond the color with whatever one you enable on the maps. Um, it will make these other things spawn in on the maps, and they can be quite difficult to actually fight if you don't have the defenses. Uh, but on the 14th, you're going to always get the invitation. And then on the 28th, you're going to get the big invitation. So the big boss comes on the 28th and the smaller ones, which are these ones here, these will come on the 14th. Now the big boss one, after you do it, you can sell them. And I would probably recommend if you need the gear, I mean, this is a pretty consistent way. If you can do maps in like two to three minutes, it's about one, one and a half hours. You're going to get guaranteed. You can sell these invitations, not these ones, but the bigger ones. They're going for about an exalt each at the moment of me making this video. Keep in mind, prices can always change, but it's a great way to farm the end game. You can also consider your atlas, and you can put in points to have these uh, different eldritch currencies and more chances for these certain things to spawn in. You can also make it so instead of it being every uh, 28th, there's a 10% chance you get double progress uh, on. And so instead of getting like plus one every time on these little ticks, uh, you will get plus two. Uh, but let's go and do the uh, black star, and then we'll do the other ones. But for the most part, the mini bosses, this one is pretty easy. The other one can be a little bit more challenging and I'll explain the mechanics, but these bosses do have mechanics that I do need to explain. For the most part, you want to be immune to being frozen because if you get frozen, you're basically dead in this. So let's go ahead and go on in and we will do this boss. This is the black star. And there's actually kind of like uh, two mechanics here. So starting right off, you'll see that the arena is divided in half. There is a blue side, which is right here where my mouse is. And then there's a red side. If you're on the red side, you take uh, less of the like ice damage. And if you're on the other side, you take less of the other damage. You'll see there's also gonna be buffs that pop up over here. And depending on the buff, we will take less damage of the uh, like opposite corresponding um, type. Uh, for me personally, I think that the fire side, you could probably just sit on the fire side for the most part because uh, you want to take less ice damage. The only thing that's really like devastating is this giant like comet avalanche of these like snowstorm. That's the thing that will usually get most people killed. There are also these pillars. If you want to, you can hide behind them. When she uses her giant like, I think it's like four or five laser beam, um, she will destroy these. So if you want to hide behind these for certain mechanics, don't hide behind them when she does her laser. The boss fight is honestly pretty easy, but I'm just trying to explain everything for intense purposes of being like a, a good teacher here. So we'll probably end up melting the characters pretty fast. So like I said, my recommendation is for beginners, 
I mean, you can sit right in between and like this, this right here, see how we have these buffs? This is the thing that's gonna make us usually die. So I recommend again, for beginners, stay on the red side. It's usually gonna be a lot easier for you. I want her to do cut some moves. Like, so this move over here, this laser, if you get behind those pillars, it will cut them down. So this thing doesn't really do that much damage, but like when she does that, you wanna be on the ice one and you, you can hover between both of them. But I honestly think the, the boss fight's relatively easy, but if you really want to just stay on specifically the fire side, it's a little bit more easy. And you can see like we absolutely just melted the boss, but uh, we're gonna do the other mini boss and then we're gonna do two of the big bosses. The two big bosses are amazing to farm if you don't wanna farm certain things. In terms of like what these are worth, if you wanna buy these also, you can just buy, straight out buy these from players. Uh, but I believe um, if you wanna do the quest line one, they are green, especially the screaming invitations, which are the most expensive ones. Those ones, the first time they drop, remember they're green, you can't trade or trade them. So you'll have to do them, you might as well. And there's potentially huge drops with them. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's how we do the invitations. And um, just as a heads up, if you want to sell these, the smaller ones are only worth like 5 chaos. They're basically worthless. Like if you want to buy these from other players, feel free to go and buy these. I just bought one of these recently. Let me see if I scroll up here. See, I was buying these for like like five, anywhere from five to seven. Uh, well, the, the red ones can be like a little bit more expensive. It's like five to seven. So you can get them for five though. Um, but the rhythm invitation is usually like five. The other one, the reason why is there's like a ring that can drop on this one that can be used for certain builds. Not our build though. But uh, anyways, let's go and cut to the uh, other set of bosses over here. All right, so this is going to be a boss leading up to the Eater of Worlds. So this will just drop as long as you keep on just playing your maps with this uh, advance closer to the Eater of the Worlds. In terms of the difficulty, uh, however, he tends to like to one-shot, and it can be kind of nasty um, if it's your first time playing him. So, over here. Here is the boss over here, the Infinite Hunger. So, in terms of the mechanic, the only thing you gotta watch out for is when he turns into like a little puddle. Uh, since you can kind of sit at range, he has like a charge, but it's like super slow. Try to be behind him, ideally. And then you'll start to see a bunch of, like, the world uh, or the map is going to enclose on you. And if at any point you feel like it's a little dangerous, you cannot actually go back, unfortunately, with this guy. But he'll pop up, and this actually can hit pretty hard. Sometimes with minions, the, the unfortunate thing with him is the minion um, won't uh, get hit by it. Eventually, though, he'll suck you in. And you're, what you're going to try to look for is the exit. And while you're looking for the exit, here's the exit over here, um, you're going to get these little like uh, conditions called corrosive hunger. You want to get out of that area as fast as you can. However, sometimes you can get stuck in it. The key is to look at which direction like the stream is kind of going in. It's, it's kind of hard to see though, I'll be honest. Um, but if I can mention it, I mean, I guess you can just see how the water looks in the direction that I'm going. He does have like a slam attack, but he's like very visual with his uh, abilities. I just try not to stay too close to him. I will apply the brittle and then just go away because he can still hit really hard. But it's this ability that I really hate because you're supposed to, he's supposed to pop up on you. He won't pop up on the minions, unfortunately. Like some of the other bosses, like Minotaur, he'll pop on a minion, but this guy, he, he doesn't fall for it. Hopefully we can two-cycle him, because I don't want to get sucked up again. Okay, okay, we got him. So we dropped the E-Core, and there we go. That, that thing getting sucked in is actually one of the biggest problems with him, because there's going to be monsters, and there are little, like, islands that you can step on, but if you see the direction that this is kind of going in... Uh, let's see if I can maybe show a better example of it. Oh, this... Oh, it applies over here, too. Oh. Wait, what? I've already killed the boss, though. Wait, you can get sucked in by just going over there? Okay, it looks like it's kind of going downward, right? I don't know if you guys can see it, but it looks like the water's all going down, right? So you want to stay on these islands. I'm glad I was able to actually just go in there and show you. I didn't even know you could do that. Um, but you can see like where the water is going. That's where you want to go towards. All right, real quick. Also wanted to add this as a little note. Um, you will be getting stacks over in the top left. You don't want those stacks. That makes you take more damage. So don't get those stacks. The more time you stay in here, the more stacks you'll get when you're stepping inside of like the sewage water. I don't know if my cam's gonna be like reverse, but uh, yeah. 
so you can see kind of where it's going. And, and it's a, it, it, this area is like the hard, that's like the hard part with this boss, but that's how you defeat him. He's actually not too bad. So uh, next mechanic, we're gonna be doing, we're gonna be doing the Screaming Invitation. Now I just had a drop over here. In order to get this to drop, uh, you're just gonna keep on doing these maps uh, with specifically the little like blue orb enabled, which is the Eater of Worlds. So you'll access this as you start progressing in the game, um, but you're gonna have to just enable this and you just keep on doing it and eventually you will be able to advance closer to him. And after you defeat him though, you'll be able to see this little thing that says uh, Eater of Worlds if you open up your map, uh, zero out of 28. And um, this, will make it so you're guaranteed getting another one of these. Now, the first one that you do, it's green. You'll have to actually do it. But the thing is, is that you can sell this for about one exalt, at least as of right now. There's an item that we can farm from it. In fact, I can show you guys all the items that you can get from it and what they're worth, at least as of right now. The item that we want is really Ashes of the Stars. It's a very, very expensive amulet. Uh, it used to be way cheaper. I think they changed the drop rate this league. But uh, Melding of the Flesh is really excellent too. If you get either one of these, you're pretty much golden in terms of like, did you make your profit? But it's really good. Uh, and as time goes up, this will probably go up maybe a little bit in price until Ash of the Star maybe drops down in, uh, in price. But uh, those are the two really good items. The rest of the stuff, it really doesn't get used too much. The bow is interesting, but let's go ahead and hop in and we will defeat this boss. So this boss actually has a mechanic. Uh, I guess we can just go and explain. It's really not that difficult of a boss fight when you understand the mechanics, um, but the mechanic is very, very dangerous. Um, so you want to stay away from the tentacles, but you want to touch these purple balls. So you want to touch this purple... Okay, you want to touch the balls, but stay away from the tentacles. Uh, I know the boss. <laughs> but that's actually what you do on it, okay? So... The main mechanic is try to stay behind him because he has this laser beam. But if he's at a wall, I'd kind of move away from the wall. But the reason why is because there's tentacles that come out. But when there's the giant tentacles, yeah, you definitely want to move away. But if he's in the center, okay, now I think he's going to do his mechanic with the uh, balls pretty soon. But as long as his back is turned towards you, you're pretty much good to go. I'm just going closer so I can apply the uh, brittle. So you want to stay in these balls until there's no ring around the purple ball. So you see how we're doing that? You might take some damage from the laser beam, but you got to do it. You have to take the damage. But that's that mechanic will pretty much one-shot everyone. I actually don't know if it's possible to even survive that, to be honest. <laughs> but pretty much... Oh, oh no. That one we got hit by. But it's not a big deal if you die to him, specifically on the uh, ball mechanic, because sometimes it can be really hard. That time he just did like a slam, and I guess we couldn't tank it. I was kind of curious to see if I could tank it also. Um, just trying to see how powerful our character is at this moment. But really, the only important thing is just not getting hit by this. Now, unfortunately, he's doing the laser on us, but you, you have to, you have to, you have to take it sometimes. There's just, sometimes there's too many things going on. But the thing is, is if you don't pop them, then he will one-shot you. Oh, there's one right here. There we go. I think I think we got it. There we go. But pretty much stay behind his uh, his, his model and you'll be a-okay. -okay. He's about dead right now. Let's see if we get something good to draw. Come on, Ash to the stars. Let's go. Oh, oh. We got the, uh, we got the bow. Okay. So... In terms of what's worth something here, the bow is probably worth like one chaos. Yeah, it's like one chaos. We got a gold ring. This is not specifically to him, but it's not really worth anything either. Uh, but these are good. The exceptional, um, they're worth at least as of right now 16 chaos. But for the most part, usually it is uh, is basically if you don't get the the melding of the flesh or the uh, amulet, you're pretty much going negative with it. But that is one of the cooler bosses in the absence of symmetry and harmony. Once you defeat them for the first time though, you will get the uh, watchstone and that will increase the uh, tier of the maps. But that's uh, that mechanic. All right, so now we're gonna be doing these super bosses. One of them is the incandescent invitation and there's another one that you can receive uh, towards the eater of worlds. Now these ones, the first time you get them, you can't actually sell them. Like if I was to try to put them in uh, my stash tab to, to sell, I can't, I actually have to do them. But 
Later, what we're going to be able to do is keep on doing maps, and then we'll start getting these as drops, and we can sell them. They're about one exalt each, uh, but they can drop items that are worth a lot of money. Specifically, there is the uh, Ashes of the Stars and Crystallized Omniscience. Uh, there's also Forbidden Flame that's worth a decent amount too, but the only thing that's actually really worth anything <coughs> is going to be the Crystallized Omniscience. The rest, you can see, the drops. The Annihilating Light is actually a really insane item. It's only worth one Chaos, though? Well, that's fine. It, it, it depends on its rolls, actually. I think the, the rolls will matter a lot on that. But yeah, we'll go ahead and throw it in. Uh, now, this one is all about fire damage. The other one, uh, basically, it has like a one-shot mechanic that it's almost impossible to like survive. I don't know if you can survive. I don't think I've ever really tried. But this guy... He throws out these giant meatballs, and these meatballs, yeah, you don't want to touch them. That's kind of like the only mechanic. And like, it's more of a skill thing, but you can actually just port back in or just die and then phase out the mechanic. So, just walk under him, just start the boss. So, we're just going to go apply that uh, brittle from our boots and just walk around. This boss, I wouldn't say, is really that difficult. It's just that there's one of the phases, um, especially as Skelly. Skelly Mage, pretty easy. Just don't stand on the fire. Although, since we do Flame Dash, it kind of messes with some of the, like, the terrain where it looks like uh, there's fire. So when he does this, I'm pretty sure you're supposed to walk away. I never really tried to stand in it. This is the mechanic where this is a skilled mechanic. So, you see how there's like these little paths? The Maven helps out too. But, sometimes you actually gotta dodge the meatballs. You can see there's an opening here. Since we have minions, or you can actually just summon minions around on them and then just have the minion absorb it. <laughs> like right there, see? The, and minions kinda cheat on this one, I ain't gonna lie. Like, minions are just too OP. Should we still apply? Ooh, watch out for that. Alright, we got the meatballs again. But you can see, like, minions... I mean, if I want to, I can just chill here. I I'm trying to dodge to make you guys, like, better players, you know? But, uh, yeah, minions... OP. Ooh, I actually got hit right there. You can see they do a decent amount of damage. For sure. Doing it again. This one's really easy. I think out of the two bosses, I would much rather do this boss if I wanted to like farm endgame like bosses, because for at least minions. Oh, whoops. We took too many at once. But uh, if you die on them, it's, it's really not that big of a deal. Uh, we got another aura that we got to throw back on. There we go. But here's what I was talking about. So you see that this mechanic is still going. I, I actually did die on purpose here. The reason why I want to show you guys that see this grace period, we can't be damaged at all. So I can wait for the mechanic to completely phase out and then just co come back in and be like, okay, I'm ready to fight. So big brain plays. If you want to beat him without like going in dying again, if you want to, it's another option. Woo, we got the uh, void stone, which is normal. The exceptional thing isn't really worth anything. Uh, wide swing. We got the shield. I don't think the shield is actually worth anything. Let me double check that for you. The shield's worth like one chaos. So basically, we got nothing. The only thing that's really worth it is, uh, of course, getting, hopefully, that uh, omniscience. But uh, we talked to the, uh, this guy. And we can also talk to uh, Kyrak in the hideout. And now, uh, we're going to take this. And then uh, we can do the other boss when the thing drops. I mean, if you want both these bosses to spawn in, uh, all you need to do is select this, and eventually these will drop. Now, how many bosses does it take? You have to defeat tier 14 plus Searing Exarch monsters to advance uh, to get these. Um, it's the same thing with this one. It depends on the one that you want. Now, previously on the last patch, um, like 3.17, they made it so this one, you took more damage. Uh, I'm pretty sure they patched that out, though. Okay, because everyone farmed this one before, because on this side of the tree, um, you actually took more damage. Like, this boss, I can farm all day. Like, it's super easy. Um, this one, though, um, 
this one I would say is much more difficult, which we'll get into in a moment here, but you can run this thing, um, this etched by acid, and I believe it's basically the same on this one, but they call it something else, Baps uh, baptized by fire. So you have a 10% chance to get double progress when you are doing uh, this. So basically what it comes down to is every 28 maps of either one of these, and once you get these uh, stones, by the way, socking them in, it's gonna increase the tier of all the maps that drop, which is a fantastic thing. And there, we'll talk about how to get the other ones later, but. Um, you will get the item that drops that we use to go in. Now, each one of these, at the moment of me making this video, they're about one exalt each. So they are definitely, definitely worth doing um, earlier on to uh, get uh, the extra one exalt. So it's like the, one of the easiest ways to guarantee every 28 maps. Technically, if I do this one, it's going to be under that uh, and we'll get a bunch of results. But now I would say on the tree, select either one. I'm actually probably going to be pathing out towards this one eventually. Uh, there's, there's just more stuff on this side of the tree that I want, but I'm not going to do this to run it to get the drop. I'm actually going to be doing this to sell it and so I can get my Ashes of the Stars or I can just get other things. Uh, but it's like a very safe way to guarantee. Now, every time you interact with the... Um, things like I actually get grab this too so like the altars have additional downsides but what I do is I pick the ones where it says it gives the monster extra um resistances so it'll be like the monsters have like 80 80 percent uh like cold resist and 10 percent max cold res like it doesn't matter the resistances because if we're running flesh crafter or if we're running crystallized omniscience which could be for all builds yeah it doesn't um affect it at all because you're just penetrating all of it right or if you're running like templar i believe can also ignore resistances on crits there's a lot of ways to ignore uh like different resistances or do other things so yeah you basically have no downsides if you uh select the right ones on like when you're doing the maps to get like these other little modifiers that spawn in more enemies that will give you more rewards but yeah there there's uh, one of the bosses one to the next one Alrighty, so congratulations if you defeated the Eater of the World and the Searing Exarch bosses. These can be a legitimate way to farm for all of your gear. It's a mechanic where I think it's kind of fun too. Like they do have, uh, you know, interactive uh, playstyles for the boss fights. And like, it's like a guaranteed way to get some of these uh, Eldritch currency so you can modify certain things. Uh, like for example, those brittle boots, that's how you can get these. You can also get them as drops as you're just playing in the maps. When you have whatever one enabled, they, they can drop with, let's say, the Searing Exarch or Eater of Worlds uh, modifiers. But that's the mechanic and uh, that that's one like a uh, end game sort of boss mechanic and once you defeat the bosses you'll get the stones and then you put the stones in and then it's going to increase the tier of your maps when you fight the like the big bosses so there's the mini bosses which are like the small invitations and then the screaming are the uh, the, the bigger one uh, for it but anyways congratulations if you defeated it and next up we just got the the feared and then just like a last like follow-up video for like what to do when you've basically done everything because at this point like now that i'm recording it we've done everything we got all the maps we've got all of the atlas passive that's another thing that you want to focus in on we've got like everything completed so this build is more than capable without ash of the stars which is like one of the best ambulance i still want it but the thing is is that i wouldn't complete the game without getting an item that is so expensive that like it feels unrealistic for like you know a beginner to realistically get but yeah anyways thanks for tuning in guys if you guys enjoyed the video drop a like on your way out and uh, subscribe if you guys want to see more path of exile content very soon uh we'll be dropping like other like end game like uh, farming guides because that's what I want to focus in on uh, later down the line after we like do everything because your first goal when you're playing PewDiePie just get all the Atlas points but take care I'll see you guys in the next video peace